morning and welcome to the first online Lighthouse demonstration. My name's John, I look after the UK sales function at Lighthouse. Um, with me today, you can't see him, he's behind, behind the scenes, I've got James, he's part of the, uh, the technical team, um, so he's going to assist me when we go through how we use our printers, looking at the software, um, and he's, he's just going to help me with any, any sort of technical bits. Um, so just a bit of background about us, um, Lighthouse we've been running for around sort of 28 years, uh, started with our now chairman, um, business has been built up obviously over the, the 28 years, now we're actually owned by the manufacturers of the, the, the printers that we, that we supply, um, currently customer base sort of in the tens of thousands, um, so we supply all the materials, we do all the software, all the training for our sign and label systems. Uh, generally sit with end users who use the systems for anything from sort of health and safety signage all the way through to visual management, um, asset marking um, and general site signage. So what I'm going to go through today is going to go through some of the applications for the system, the justification for the system and also some of the cost benefits um, for the system as well. Then what we'll do after that is we'll go um, have a look at how the actual system works, look at the software um, and, and go from there. So first of all, uh, what we'll do is go through our entry level system. So it's the CPM 100 G5. So CPM stands for cut print machine and works on 100 mil wide vinyl. Um, so as you can see the, the unit here, what I'll do is I'll go through how that works afterwards. Um, what we've got here is we've got some demonstration boards which just show some of the applications for the system. So a big, a big application which a lot of our customers currently use the system for is health and safety. Um, so you've got all these different symbols that are actually built into our software package that you can drop onto the actual label file and produce. Um, all the materials that you see on here are uh, self-adhesive vinyl and then what the system does it layers the colour on top. Um, the material you see on the boards is five year exterior grade, five year UV stable and um, what the system does as well it actually cuts the label to any shape or size. Um, so the great thing about our systems is you can make it bespoke, you can make it site specific, it's not a generic sign that you would buy from a sign shop. Um, so you can add all these different bits of information on there. Um, so like I say, the symbols, drag and drop on there, um, word and you can, you can change. Um, the only other material that you've got on this board here is the photoluminescent material. So we supply glow in the dark material. Um, so things like fire exit signs, fire call points, that kind of thing, you can, you can actually use the system for as well. So if I turn, turn this over, we've got, the, uh, we've got a site board here. Um, so again, you can with this system, you can use 100 mil strips, go across the board, um, and you can obviously put your different whether it's mandatory, prohibition, warning labels onto one board. Um, we supply all the consumables for the system, including all these backing boards. So this is like a thin PVC board, uh, but we supply Fomex, aluminium boards, so a range of different boards depending on on what you require. So next board. Uh, this is more specific, so things like uh, type approval labels, so this is more for sort of commercial vehicles. Uh, this board shows some of the different materials that we do, so we do like a tamper evidence, um, tamper destructible material, so whether it needs to be sort of approved by vehicle authorities um, or any sort of different authorities then, then obviously we, we supply the material. Um, and this just shows along the bottom you've got like a nested set of labels, so effectively you can produce it off the printer cuts the labels out and you can you can have a nested set of labels just so you make sure you've got each of the each of the labels on there. Next board is uh, a shadow board that's been produced off, off the system. Again this system cuts the label to any shape or size. So these have been done on clear vinyl but you can actually cut the outline um, for the system. So a board like this generally is quite expensive to buy in. So you're looking between £100, £150 from a sign shop to buy this, this kind of board in. A fire system anywhere from £10 to £15, depends on how much material you actually put onto the board. See the main, main reasons for shadow boards, um, make sure the tools are in the right place. Um, obviously if it's on a, on a production line, 
um, you want to make sure the tools go back. So if the, if the tools um, if the, if the tools um, aren't on the board, then obviously if that person hasn't got the tool to, to actually work that part of the the production line, then um, potentially the line can close. Uh, also, it gives your staff more accountability of tools as well. Obviously, replacing tools can be quite expensive. You know, some tools hundreds of pounds to replace. Uh, so this gives you sort of a visual management board. And the great thing with this, obviously, you can change it as and when. You know, you don't have to replace the whole board each time. If you have a new book, new tool, you can just place it back on the board. Next one we've got here, pipe markers. So we do all the official pipe marker colours um, with our with our systems, and I'll go through a, a few more of the, the consumable lists as we go along. But yeah, these are all the British standard sort of colours that you've got on here. You put the symbols on. Uh, so GHS again, they're all built into the software. If there's any changes in, in legislation with the software, so the GHS symbols came out a few years ago, then we update it. Um, so it's, it's all available on our website. So yeah, again, drag and drop the images on and the machine will cut the actual pipe marker out for you. Um, so you've got that there. This side, um, more sort of engineering equipment. So replacement of control panels. Um, you've got things like operator diagrams. Um, big thing as well at the minute, standard operating procedures. Um, so it means that you, you can put something on there that looks professional. Um, it's going to last in an engineering environment. It's not a laminated sheet. Um, so again, the, the machine gives you the, the versatility to cut these labels out. Uh, also, you notice on here, you've got barcode language there. So things like asset management, the software will produce or convert um, data into, into barcodes. So we'll go through that in a little bit more detail, different ways you can do it. You can either manually type, type a number in, change it to barcode form, you can do a sequential number, or you can actually link it to an Excel access database and pull this information through, um, and it obviously produce that, that for you. Um, but again, looking at sort of cost savings, you know, for someone to produce a panel for you as a one-off, um, you, know, you could be looking at a minimum order quantity for up to 100 pounds. Something like this, you're looking sort of four or five pounds worth of material. So it just gives you an idea of sort of the cost savings that you that you can get through the printer. Um, goes on to other other materials, so things like this. This is like an etched glass. If I just move it forward a little bit, you can see that better. So an etched glass effect, so people use it in facilities management. Uh, so glass doors, see safety spots on glass, that kind of thing. Again, to get someone out to do this manifestation on glass, it costs a lot of money. You know, you're looking at a few hundred pounds to get someone out to do this. Material-wise, for us, you know, it's a few pounds for material for, for a few spots. So, um, just means as well, you're not having to wait for someone to come out on site. You can do it quickly. If there's any changes, you can do it quickly. You're not having to wait for someone to come out on site. So, the same about the, the system being 100 mil wide, it does in the software. It does have a timing feature. Um, that you can produce sort of strips of material, so you've just got to line it up on there. Uh, we do have a bigger system, which I'll move on to um, in, a, in a little while. Um, but yeah, you can obviously make it up of, of strips um, to produce sort of a bigger board if you've got any of those um, around site. This is a brush material that we that we supply for the printers. Um, looks like aluminium plate. You know, if you hold it up there wouldn't know it's aluminium plate but again a lot cheaper aluminium plates this sort of size you're looking sort of anywhere 20 to 30 pounds for an aluminium plate on this system you're looking sort of between one pound 50 two pounds for, for for the plate on there and again if you've got any any changes um, if it's new staff um, you know a lot of universities and colleges um, really like this because they make have so many changes around site different different names so they're constantly updating that kind of thing. Um, so that just shows you some of the uh, some of the requirements for it. On average, um, the systems um, that we supply they're sort of sixty to seventy percent cheaper than actually buying signage in. Uh, the actual unit cost for this system it's it's one four nine five, so just under fifteen hundred pounds. So with the systems we include um, software. Uh, we include training on site, so two to three hours training on site. 
um, support as well for the first 12 months and then after that it's just based on you, you ordering material. Um, so basically everything to, to get you up and running. Generally our, our, our customers tend to find sort of 12 months, two years payback for the, for the system against their current u usage and then also projects going forward um, they can potentially use the, the system for. So what I'll do is I'll quickly show you um, the actual unit itself. So as you can see here, we've got the latch on the side. So if we open the latch at the bottom here, we've got the roll of vinyl. So these are what we call thermal transfer printers. So what they do is they, they use resin ribbon. They don't actually use ink to produce the, the actual label. So um, self-adhesive roll, it's a continuous roll. So you've got the sprockets that run down the edge there. So that sits at the back of the back of the printer, sits inside there, um, and then you've got a thermal ribbon which sits just inside a cartridge like that. So once the once the ribbon runs out, you do actually replace the ribbon to so keep keep the cartridges. Uh, cartridges have an RFID tag, so basically a chip on there, so it tells you what colour goes in into the system, it tells you how much is left on there, and what it does, it puts a different heat setting for each each colour just so it gives you better, better coverage. Um, so the roll of vinyl sits there. Here you've got a thermal print head, which just runs along there. So when you put the cartridge in, it just clicks in. Very simple, just like that. We just put useful things on, dots on this side, so it's yellow, dots on that side, so it's blue, so you know which way to put it in. Um, and obviously they cover, cover everything in the training um, when they uh, come install the, the actual printers. Inside here, the actual cutting, blade, if I just get that out, so it's quite a small blade, you can actually see it on the, on the camera there, James will tell me. Uh, just about. Just about, just about. Just so about. it's a little tungsten blade, so that's what does all the cutting. People always ask me like, how, how far, how much cutting does it do? It's uh, does five miles, five miles of cutting. Um, obviously we supply different materials, so depending on the thickness of the material and how tough it is, sometimes it has more wear on the blade. So some of our customers, they'll literally use it until it wears out. Some people will just replace it every year. The actual tungsten blade itself is only 25 pounds to replace. So, um, so yeah, sometimes people just re replace it on an annual basis as well, of course. So basically what that does, that goes across an axis and then the material goes in and out and that actually cuts, cuts the material for you. So pretty self-explanatory. The hatch, uh, this side, on off switch, manual feed key, manual cut key. And this little dial on the side is just for the depth of the cutter blade. Like I mentioned before, you've got the different materials that we supply. Um, so generally, vinyl is the thinnest material, so you set the set the blade to sort of two or three, and then as as the material gets a bit thicker, you you, you basically crank the, crank the dial up on the side. On the front, it's just got a um, guillotine cut. So after you set the labels, it just chops chops that off. So. Um, in regards to the, the actual software, the software that comes with the system is multi-license, uh, Microsoft certified software, um, so you, you basically can have it on as many PCs on, on one site as you want. Um, so what we'll do is I'll get James to, to run through uh, this label, just so it gives you an idea of how it works. And then after that, we'll move on to the on to the next system. So I'll pass on to James, and then he'll show you how to uh, produce that on the on the software. So hello everyone, my name's James. Um, so I'll just take you through um, what John said, like a bit of the software and how to create a basic label, really. So in the, the top left-hand corner, you see File. I'll just go to New. So here. Your default printer should be selected, it's simply because I've got um, quite a few of them installed that it's, it's coming up with that. So the printer we're currently using is the CPM100 HG5, so select that from there and click finish. So first of all you'll notice you've got a 400mm long label um, and it's 500mm which is the width of the vinyl. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually resize the label itself. So to do this, simply click outside the label somewhere, like so, and here you'll have a few different tabs which are quite self-explanatory, so paper layout you have portrait landscape, so for this purpose I'm going to select portrait, dimensions, 
This is probably one of the most important tabs because this is where we're going to actually size the label. Um, so for this label, I'm gonna have a width of 100 and I'm going to have a height of 120. Margins should automatically be set, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about those at this time. Horizontal and vertical radius, again, that is just a visual reference, so I'm just going to actually change those to zero, you don't need to worry too much about those. And rows and columns, this is if you want to print a batch of labels, so it's more cost effective to print, um, say, eight or nine, or depending on the size of the label, three or four labels in one go. So for this purpose, and just to show you, I'm going to increase that to three. And you can see on the preview that there's, there's three labels there. One of them is white, which means that's the one we're going to be designing. And the two gray, that means the label's going to be duplicated onto there. So columns, we, we won't be able to fit any columns in because we're taking up the full 100 mil width at the minute. But for smaller labels, you would. Um, and then this wire gap here, this just creates a, a nice space in between the labels. So when we actually insert something that's called a cut shape later on, um, it just allows a nice space between the labels so you can weave the excess material away. Or say if you want to run your pair of scissors down each individual label, then it just gives you room to do so. So I'm just going to set that to two, which is, which is two mil. Go to okay. So here now you can see we're just faced with a, a blank white label. So now we can just start designing it. So as John showed you earlier, we'll just do a quick no smoking sign. So along the left-hand side here, you have your toolbar, which has is, is quite a few different features. Um, so just for the first one, we want to get a graphic in there, which is the no smoking graphic. So next to the picture, you have a little drop-down arrow. So if you click on that and go to Clip Art Gallery, and then click onto your label, for this, for this actual in particular label, we're going to use a CPM section, so just maximise that. And you can see here there's quite a few different categories which kind of encompass a few thousand graphics. So there's a good few in here uh, for you to choose from, but obviously for this, um, for this one we're going to choose uh, a no smoking one. So if we go down to... And here, again, there's, if, you, if you scroll down, there's, there's quite a few in here, um, just, from, just from remembering where it is. Uh, let's find the no smoking one, which is there. If you click on it once, you can see a preview of it, and then just click OK to actually enter it into the label. So from here, you can move it around just like you would in, say, PowerPoint or Word or anything like that. Um, you can resize it as you wish move it around again, so just for now I'm going to put it there, make it a little bit smaller. And to align this to the label, because you, you could at the top use this ruler to maybe get it nice and central, but just to make it nice and easy, if you actually right click on the, the object itself, go to align. For this purpose I'm going to, uh, middle and centre is selected just because I've used that before, but you may well have, you may, you may well look like that, so if I just select middle, and center and align to label. Okay, that puts it nice in the nicely in the center. So now you can just use the arrow keys to move it up because you are aware that it's in the center now. Then to add a bit of text, again quite self-explanatory. On the left hand side, if you click on text or a text, click onto your label, our cursor appears now, so you can just enter whatever text you want. So for this purpose, I'm going to just enter no smoking. If you click off it, a nice little box appears again. You can resize it, move it around. And then just like you would in Word, again, like in PowerPoint, any of the similar Office application, along the top here, you have your, your font type, your size, your styling, so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna make this bold, and I'm going to align it into the center. Now, you're probably aware that no smoking signs have a red box about that size, and the text is actually white. So to achieve that, without actually using white ribbon. On the left-hand left side, you have an inverse function. So you can click on inverse, click onto your label. At the minute, this is black. So what we're gonna to want to do is actually change this to red up here. And now, if I just position this. One thing you will notice, the text is going to go a strange color, first of all. It's going 
It's not white at the minute, but I'll explain that in a second. Right, so the only rule with an inverse is that the text and the inverse box needs to be the same colour. So if I just select that text, change that to red, you notice that changes to white. So that means that the printer will print the red, but actually miss out the text. So the text will appear the colour of the vinyl. So I'm just going to make it a little bit, a little bit bigger. And again, just so we're making sure everything's in the centre, if I select the inverse, just like we did earlier, right click, go to align, it remembers the settings I used earlier. So I'll actually leave that one there because we only want it to be that one. There we go, it's nicely in the centre. Now to align a text to an object, if you first select the text you want to align to, hold down the shift key and select the text itself. Up here we have an alignment toolbar and you'll be able to see from the little diagrams where it's going to align to. So if I just select centre, there we go, that's nicely in the centre. Now the final thing to do is to add a cut shape because at the minute it will still print and actually chop the vinyl off at the end but you won't be left with any individual labels at, at present. So again if we go to the clip art gallery, go to picture, clip art gallery, click onto the label, TPM and there's actually a designated section for cut shapes. So within here, there's, there's quite a few again, um, so feel free to choose whichever one you want. Um, there's some more funky shapes down here, and the ones near the top are your basic squares and rectangles just with different radiuses. Um, so I'm just going to select this one here because that is a nice 90 by 90. Okay. So here is your cut shape. So again, what you can do, you can actually manually resize this or if you double click on it, the same with any other object that you want to edit, you get this box that appears now. Um, so if you go to appearance, you can actually manually choose the, the width and the height. So if you have a, a set width and set height that you would like it to be set to, feel free to do that. On this occasion I don't, so I'm just going to manually resize it. Like so. And again, just to make sure it's nice and aligned into the centre of the label, right click, align, middle, centre and align to label ticked, and there we go. So now, because early, you may remember, I actually increased the, the rows to three. If we just zoom out slightly by using the zoom key up here. Like that. Or alternatively, you can hold down the control key and use the scroll wheel. So you can see there we've got one label and two grey ones. If we just go to print now, so file print. Here you have labels and pages. Because we're printing a batch of labels, you want to select pages. So if I select pages and just make sure it's set to one for now. Check. Just check obviously we're printing to the correct printer. And first of all, if you click preview, you'll notice that all the labels turn to the same as the first one. So if you're happy, down here on the preview, just simply click print. What is the, is the ribbon in, John? You've got an RFID on it. You've got an RFID on it. So I can be James as assistant now. <laughs> So the ribbon with the, the ribbon with the RFID, um, it will detect that and automatically start printing it if it detects that colour in the label. So I'll just give you a quick uh, preview of the actual printer itself. If I just switch the screens. So it's a good check, really. Um, so if if there's any issue, you say if it's got the, if it hasn't got an RFID tag on the ribbon, or if the wrong colour's in and it's got a different RFID tag. And it actually prompts you, prompts you on the screen. Um, so if there's any other errors, whether the vinyl's not in right or anything at all, then obviously it can, it can prompt you on the screen. So it's a, it's a good sort of check. So, so say with these thermal printers, what they do is they layer the colour over. So it's the, on, the only downside with thermal printers is you have to change the, the, ribbons, the ribbons over. 
uh, but obviously the upside of it is it's dry straight away, you can stick it outside, you don't need to laminate it. So that's the that's the key point, and that's why that's why we, we sell sort of thermal thermal printers for industrial applications. So what's what it's done, it's done the first pass of, of colour. So all we do, it's the only manual bit of that you have to do, everything else is calibrated through through the printer. Literally take the cartridge out, put the next colour in, just make sure it's in there okay, shut the hatch. And again, it picks up the RFID tag and it will, it will automatically print. So what, what I'll do, I'll just show you what that looks like on the actual status monitor. So here, red is loaded and it just says printing, wait for a while. So in a second, once that's actually printed, it will say um, cutting. There we go. So that's it actually what physically winding winding the vinyl back through the printer and it's just about to cut it. Yeah, I mean the great thing is the, the only manual bit you need to do is just change change the ribbon and cartridge over. The system does everything else, it winds it back for the for the cut shape. Um, and you can offset the, the, the time printing. So if people are buying signage in at the minute, you know how long does it take for you to look through a catalogue? Um, Braise the order, send the order across, wait for the order. Whereas actually printing them yourself, there is, you know, there's a there's a time improvement. You can get it you can get it put up straight away. Um, so if I just peel the excess off, you say lay it on a flat desk, and then you can see there we go, printed it first time. So that's your your health and safety label. So this this machine, like I say, this is CPM one hundred um, G five. Um, so this system is what we call it's a 200 DPI printer. Um, so it's 200 dots per square inch. So we class it as our sort of standard definition printer. We do a higher definition print, so it's a 400 DPI system. So basically, the, the, obviously the main difference is obviously the definition of the printer, and the detail that you can go down to. The the other difference is that the, the 400 DPI printer will do process color. So our standard system just prints block colour, so it layers the colour, but it's just block colour. So for health and safety, so sort of standard labels, that kind of thing, it's fine for. The higher definition printer will do CMYK. So basically you can put PDFs, JPEGs, different logos, different branding onto the label file and it will print them using four ribbons. So yellow, magenta, cyan and process black. Um, the other difference as well, the H uh, version you can actually network standard version we we have the software it's multi-licensed but you're not able to network it the higher definition system you can actually um, network it as well so um, just a few examples of some boards so this just shows finer detail I mean they're so fine detail that this camera doesn't actually pick it up we we're trying to trying to pick it up earlier but it just shows some of the some of the labels so this system predominantly is used for things like product labels um, some people use it for obviously visual management because you can you can actually do process colour, um, but this just gives you an idea of some of the some of the detail that it can go down to, um, and again some of the different materials that we do on here. So we do polyester, um, a lot of polyesters UL UL approved, um, silver grey mirror effect. So people use it for for rating plates. Um, do this material here is like a polycarbonate overlay. So we saw the control panel earlier. This is another another version of the control panel. So people use it for shorter runs, prototyping. It's really good for as well. So if you've got a product that you want to send out to a customer, but it's a it's, it's a bit of a prototype, then you can put a professional looking label. You're not having to pay a hundred pounds a time for a label or do the send the design work off and proof it. You can do everything in house, and you can produce it, and it's done. It's done quickly and it looks it looks professional. So, like I say, it gives you an idea of the types of things you can you can produce on the system. Um, this is CMYK element. So again, these are these are either JPEGs, PDFs that you drop into the into the software, and it can produce obviously the relevant graphics on that. And you've got the same on the other side. So standard operating procedures, um, like I mentioned earlier. A lot of people for standard operating procedures they either laminate it, stick it on, it just doesn't just doesn't last. Whereas with this you can put it on a durable label, it's on the side of the of the machine or a certain process that you need to guide people through. 
Um, so yeah, you can you can add that on there. Um, things like hire equipment. Um, it's just a, a great thing to put on the side, just so people don't have to go back to the desk to find the PDF of the operator instructions. Um, it can cut down on customer service calls and all that kind of thing, so people can put it on their, on their products. Um, this board here, again, I don't think it will pick the detail up, but this one, we send these boards out um, on a PDF so you can view them, and obviously when we do an on-site demonstration, people can view these in a little bit more detail. But this just shows you the difference between the 200 DPI and the 400 DPI version. And obviously when you're going down to schematics and fine detail, and obviously sometimes with barcodes as well, you need like a, a finer definition. So that's why sometimes we'd advise the, the 400 DPI system. So um, the actual cost difference, so the 400 DPI system is 1995. Um, so basically there is obviously different print head, different motherboards. So there is this, there's some differences with the, with the actual system. So it's a higher, higher price, but effectively what you're getting is a, a system that, that will produce small, smaller labels. It'll do the CMYK plus you can, can network it so it just sort of takes it onto onto another level. Um, material wise for the 200 dpi and the 400 dpi system they're exactly the same um, so you, there's, there's no uh, sort of higher price if you go into the, the 400 dpi so the way the material works they come on the actual vinyl roll which sits on the back here comes on 15 meters so one five meter roll um, vinyl it's just under 40 pounds um, the ribbon and cartridges um, the actual ribbon comes on a 50 meter length, so it's just under eight, 85 pounds. Um, and then the replacements are, are 45 pounds. Um, so basically the, the vinyl sort of ongoing, you're looking just over two pound a meter. The ribbon sort of ongoing is, just, is around one pound a meter. So it just gives you an idea of sort of the, the costs, the costs ongoing. But what I always say to customers is just look at the price per label. Because when I say to people it sounds like it's 40 pounds for a roll of vinyl, it sounds expensive. But when you actually break it down to cost per label, our systems are a lot a lot more co cost effective against against buying the signage in. Um, so I so say this is the we'll go on to the 400 DPI um, printer. So the examples that we're going to use for this are a barcodes. Um, and what we'll do is we'll we'll put in some variable information which James will go through. Um, the way the actual system looks compared to the 200 DPI is you know, it's, it's exactly the same. The only thing you have on the back of it is a, is a network port and how it, how it picks up the material works in exactly the same, the same way. So what I'll do is I'll pass back to James and then we can set up like a sequential number with a barcode and it just shows you, the, shows you the process of that. Hello again guys, so I'll just change the screen back so you can see your software. And apologies, um, previously, uh, in the status monitor, you, you may not have been able to see, it was actually on my the screen, so for the, when we print this label, I'll, I'll remember to move over, so apologies for that. Uh, but right, if I just close down this label, and we start a new one. Again, just like we did before, let's file a new. The HG5 we are currently using, so I'll just select the HG5 and finish. So it's entirely up to you what kind of label you want to do, but I'm just going to show you an asset marking label, um, similar to the ones you use at Lighthouse. So it has a, a QR code and just an asset number. Um, so I'm just going to double click on the outside of the label. The paper layout for this, I'm just going to leave as landscape for now. Go to dimensions. So the width and the height is as we see on screen. So that's an important thing to remember. So the 400 width is what we see physically on screen. So I'm just going to change that to, let's go with, uh, I don't know, 35. And height, let's go with um, 19. I'll explain why, actually then, let's do 24. I'll explain why I've done that in a second because it, it probably seems like quite an odd number. Um, but there we go, so width and height all set. Margins are the default as they should be. Horizontal and vertical radius, as we mentioned previously, that is just a visual reference on the physical label. You might not be able to see it, but there is actually a slight radius here. So again, it's not going to print or cut that, it's just it's purely for visual reference. And now I'm going to just increase the rows and the columns. So if you go like that, and then if you notice, I can't actually go anymore 
in terms of rows because 24 times 4, obviously, you, you, won't, you won't be able to get another one into the, the 100 mil width. And the reason I actually set it to 24 earlier is so I can get um, a nice gap in between the labels like that. So if I actually start to increase the columns now, you'll see on the preview um, there's, a nice, there's a nice little gap in between them. And what this now enables us to do, if I just increase that to, to 4, we can put an X gap in, which is the, 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 the other axis gap. So again, you can just put a 1 mil gap in there. Click OK. Again, just like before, we've got one white label. If I hold down control and zoom out for the scroll key, you can see there's lots of other, lots of other gray labels, but we're just focusing on this one for now. So on the left-hand side on the toolbar, I'm just going to select text, enter it to the label. Don't be alarmed if the text is quite large at this stage, obviously because it's, the default is 20 points in terms of the size, but you, you, you can resize it. So I'm just going to type in Lighthouse Asset. And just resize that. I'm going to make it nice and bold, like that. Right, so now, as John mentioned, you can do something called sequential numbering. Um, so that's what we want to get set up first. So if I, along the top here, you have a little um, button called data. You go to data and go to variables. Here, if you do have any existing variables actually in the label, um, they will appear here and you can click on them, edit, delete, and copy, etc. But for this purpose, I'm just going to use the wizard because this is a foolproof way of actually generating, generating a label. So here, um, you have a few different options. Um, because it's an incremental number that we want to be using, so say we've got um, a number of different assets and we want to print a batch of labels but only change the asset number, um, I'm going to use counter. So then all you need to do is change, change the name, so I'm just going to call it LH asset. Next, here it's actually going to ask you to enter a starting value, it's, so it's entirely up to you if you want to do this because you can actually change this. Um, so I'm actually going to just set this to, I'm not, I'm not actually going to set one because I'll, I'll show you it afterwards. Um, but here you have a maximum number of digits, so just to keep it short and sweet I'm going to set it to 4. And here we have an incremental decrement, so we want to um, actually increment the counter. This little option here, if um, you actually get a prompt before, you can actually set up a prompt before you print it. So if I, um, you can type in whatever you want really. So if I was going to print something, I may want to remind myself to enter the start asset number. So if I go enter, like that, and click on next. Here you can either increase it in you know one, you know, like one, two, three, four, or you can go up in twos, threes, etc. Um, and change every value means say if you want to print a duplicate of a, a certain a certain asset. So say if um, we're printing ten assets, but you want two of the first asset, two of the second, I would change that to two because then after it's printed the first two, it will change to the next number and so on. So I'm just going to leave that as one for now. For this purpose, we're not going to use rollover when reached, so don't worry too much about that. We go to next. Prefix and suffix. You're probably familiar with this. Um, it's just a bit of text or anything that you want to actually um, to be displayed before or after the label. Um, so as, as a prefix, I'm just going to put LH, the lighthouse. And then that is, that's the actual, the variable setup. So if I click finish, oh, apologies, I didn't actually select the starting value. There you go, so I'm just going to put that as one. Okay, straight to finish. There we go. So that is now there. So again, we can actually go back and edit this in the future if we want to, so you're not actually stuck with it. Um, but that's how I want it for now. So if I go to the left hand side onto the toolbar, um, we actually want to represent this as both text and a QR code. So next to text, you have a little drop down arrow. 
Um, so if you go on there and go to use existing variable, you will see the variable that we created earlier and we called LH asset actually appears. So if you click on that and click onto your label. Um, so LH is a prefix that we gave it and the 0001 was the starting number that I initially forgot to put in, but there we go, it's in there now. Um, so again, resize that, position it how you want to. I'm just going to make it nice and bold. Uh, now, for a barcode or a QR code as we want in this case, it's exactly the same case. Um, so if you go to the drop down arrow next to barcode, use existing variable, LH asset. So at the minute it's actually been, it's defaulted to a, a certain type of barcode which I believe is, for me, this would be code 39. Um, that's, that's not a problem, but for this okay, you know, for this actual label, I would like to change it to a QR code. So to do this, if you just double click on it, go to barcode, the barcode tab at the top, and see it, that's actually defaulted to code 39, and for you it may well be different. And if I scroll down and go to QR, select that, and OK. So it's quite small at the minute because the actual, the, the amount of data for a QR code is, you know, it can hold a lot and these few digits is not, not that much information, but I just want to make it a little bit bigger. So you'll notice it's probably almost snapping to a certain size, and that's just simply because the bar, the QR code has to be a set size, so it will, if you just let it snap to whatever you want it to be. Pop it there, pop it there. So just to make it look a bit nicer, um, I'm just gonna add an inverse into it like we did earlier because for this label we're going to be using blue ribbon and black ribbon onto white vinyl. Like so. Change that to blue and also change the text to blue. Select the inverse and select the text just so we can align everything together. So we want to go with the center and we want to go with the horizontal center as well. And there we go. So the final thing to do is to add a cut shape. So just the clip art gallery, CPM, expand that and go to cut shapes. Let's choose one with a nice radius this time. So let's just choose, I don't know, um, let's choose that one. So if I, um, there's no need for this label for it to be like a particular size, so I'm just gonna resize it manually. So, and there we go. So if we zoom out now, and just make sure we scroll this thing so you can see all the labels. When we go to print, so file and print, here, we, you may remember earlier, we actually asked it to prompt us. So enter start asset number. So I'm just gonna keep that as one for now. And the important step here is to actually select pages again because we're printing a duplicate of labels and we've actually adjusted the rows and columns. So once you've done that, click on preview. And as you can see, there's a full page of labels now. So that just goes up in, in ones all the way through to 16. And the QR code does actually change. You might not be able to see it um, very well, but there are some subtle differences. And if you did scan that, you would, you would actually be um, faced with the, the corresponding asset. So yeah, we're all happy with that. I'll just double check that we are printing to the right printer. And is, is blue or black loaded, John? Yeah, yeah, black loaded. Yeah. So right, so HD5 and then pages and then print. So I'm just gonna move this if I can. Again, what the material does, you, you, you hear it through the machine. It has basically a, a pattern that runs through the edge of the material, just so what it does it picks up the sheet left in the material. So make sure that you've got enough enough of the vinyl left in there, just so you don't get any any wastage. Um, so it picks that through first of all, and obviously just make sure that it's got got material in there. So it's done the first pass of colour. It's done the black. Again, the process is the same as when we did the health and safety label earlier. Just change it over, shut the hatch, automatic nose is the right ribbon, and it will, it will start the next pass. So you can see there, I, I actually managed, I actually dragged this data monitor over that time, so you can see what's 
what's physically happening on screen, but it's now printing. And then in a second it will change to cut. There we go. I mean, the, the great advantage with this system over other thermal transfer printers out there is sort of the cut shape is, is a huge benefit. Uh, because basically you don't need to stop loads of different rolls, loads of different die cuts, basically you produce different labels off the same continuous reel. So it just means it's a lot leaner way of producing your labels, like so you don't need to stop loads of material. Um, with our material as well, we do have a price list, everything on the price list, next working, de uh, next working day delivery if you order before 4 o'clock. Um, so you can get the material quickly, and like so you don't need to stop loads of reels of, of different material. <coughs> Um, so it's just cut it out the front there. Here's what we did earlier. But if I again, if I just peel the excess off, just so you can see it, just peel it back just like that. It's produced all those all those labels off there, and you can do as many as as many or as little as you, as you want really. And effectively, what this printer does, it prints in a meter and a half sections. So if you've got a hundred of these, or you've got two hundred of these, as long as it fits on a meter and a half section it'll do the passes of colour on that metre and a half section. Um, if you need more labels over the metre and a half section, obviously it just cuts that off and then it will start on the next the next sort of pass of, of labels. Um, well again, just shows you the detail that you can go down to um, with the system. I'll just pop that over there. Um, so the next system up from that, uh, basically it's a, it's a wide, wider system. So we call it the CPM 200. Again, it stands for cut print machine, but on a 200 mil wide um, basis. So basically the, the printer looks the same. See, so it's just slightly, slightly wider. Um, again, it does process color. And again, you can, you can network the printer. The larger printer is a 300 DPI printer. So it's sort of in between the two 100 mil systems. So what I'll do is I'll go through some of the, the applications for it. So the great thing again, you can drop PDFs, JPEGs into the into the actual software. Um, so this is basically site plan that you can put in there. A lot of people laminate these, drop they drop off walls, they don't look professional, you know, nice offices in a nice size, you want it to look professional, and also manufacturing areas, laminated sheets just don't last. So so you can do uh, site plans, um, again, sort of any corporate messages, any messages that you want to get across, um, site, health and safety messages, um, that kind of thing. You can actually get a PDF if it's an internal document, drop it onto the software and you can, you can print it with either if it's uh, block colours or CMYK, so you can, you can print it off that way. Again, sort of internal, internal sort of messages you've got in here. If it's any continuous improvement messages, all that kind of thing, you can you can bring into the, the actual software and print it off. Um, quite sort of topical at the minute. Anything for sort of hand wash, um, all that kind of thing. If it's if it's something you have to react to quickly, it just means you can get that signage up. You know, if it's if it's certain areas where there are splashes of chemicals, or if it's a wet, damp area, wash down areas, that kind of thing, then obviously you can. You can, you can put that up and it's going to last in those those kinds of environments. We supply a lot into like food industry, pharmaceutical industry, because they tend to be quite harsh environments, a lot of washdowns, don't tend to be sort of a dry environment. So these these kinds of you know materials they last last in those environments. Again, things like hazard information sheets, so supply a lot of chemical companies, or if you've got a chemical store on site, all that kind of thing, you can you can produce the, the signage off it. Um, again, internal messages, electric shock, that kind of thing can reduce off it. Um, an application that has come up quite a bit recently um, when I've been out to do some demonstrations is this, basically visual stores. A lot of people will have uh, their racking and potentially it might just have a location number or it might just have a part number on. Sometimes people go down the barcoding route. Also what a lot of businesses are doing now is they're actually putting a physical picture of the part on the rack which is good for things like stock takes, just make sure there's no errors with stock takes. It just, again, it makes sure that things go back in the right place. Because potentially if it doesn't go back in the right place, if it's a part for the production line, or if it's a part that's, that's needed for something, then you know effectively the production line could short, or it could be really expensive um, and produce, 
potentially could cost thousands of pounds or loss of work, that kind of thing. So again, that's the real benefit of having your own system is being able to do these, these different applications and these different projects. So it just it, it improved processes, um, obviously save time and help, help save money. Um, again, things like racking, um, weight limits, all that kind of thing. So we supply a lot of light to, to sort of wet different warehouses so you can use it for, for things like racking labels. Um, and obviously all, all the weight limits for sort of the end of end of aisles, um, that kind of thing. Some people use it for floor marking as well, so if it's pallet marking, that kind of thing on the floor, um, our systems can be used for. Um, going down to sort of larger sort of S SOPs, so we saw a few of them um, on the other boards, but this just gives you sort of an A an A4 sheet, um, so something slightly larger, so you can get a bit more detail onto it. Again, sort of operator instructions so for maintenance teams, engineering teams, you know, it just saves them not having to go back to a desk uh, because some, some sites that people work on, you know, it's, it can be five minutes each way. And by the time they've got back, it's which, which page was I looking at? Whereas if you can put something physically on, an operator instruction physically onto a piece of machinery, uh, whether it's a compressor or, or something like that, then, then obviously it's, it's there for future. Um, like I say, visual management, things, you know, Project 6S, all that kind of thing. If you're trying to get any kind of message across site, again, these are just examples of things that you can drop into the software. It just gives you the range of different sort of colours that you can, you can put in there. So most, or a lot of sites now are obviously looking at continuous improvement projects, lean, that kind of thing. Um, and this, this can help. You know, getting this kind of signage in from a sign shop can be really expensive. Um, because obviously it, it tends to be bespoke and generally sign shops what they require is sort of large runs of signage to, to be able to warrant them, them doing it. So with this, uh, you're looking at this sort of sign, you're looking just under about three pounds for the sign. To, for someone to produce that, they're probably minimum order quantity or you're looking sort of 10 to 15 pounds plus uh, to actually buy, buy that sign in. Uh, and we've got examples of things like shadow boards. So again, instead of just doing the cut shape, you can actually put a physical picture of the tool on there. Um, again, we supply quite a few prisons. We do quite a few hospitals, universities, that kind of thing, where they want to put more bespoke messages, or it's you know things that are topical at the minute. So things like coronavirus, that kind of thing. A lot of hospitals have to put extra signage up. Um, so it just gives you the ability to do it, and also on a short lead time. Um, because these things tend to happen quite quickly, you can't wait a month for your signage. You have, you know, have to be, you know, quick to react to, to getting it up. Um, again, you've got things like site plans. So it's great if you've got, um, you know, drivers going around site, making sure people aren't venturing into parts of the site that they sh they shouldn't be. Um, but yeah, you can again put like manufacturing areas or warehousing, and again this material you can stick it outside, so you can put it on the side of the building. It doesn't have to, it's not just internal sort of signage. Um, like I say we do supply the board, so you can put it on fencing and that kind of thing. Um, and this is sort of similar to the to the other board on the 100 mil, so it just scales it up, um, and just shows how far you can go with things like fire extinguishers, fire core points. You can put barcode in on there if you want, or a sequential number. So it means that you can asset mark them, you can keep track of them. Because um, some people have hundreds of these on site, or they'll have hundreds of fire call points. They want to know where everyone is and make sure it's marked up properly. And again, you know, getting this bespoke information on there, it can be expensive for a sign shop to, to do it. And also, sometimes you'll get the first run of um, signs or labels through where the, the price is relatively cheap. Where after that it's ongoing, you know, how much is it to replace sort of a few week or you know, a few month, where this, this system really comes into play. Um, and also the general signage, so things like temporary signage is really good for as well. Um, so whether it's sort of road closures, whether it's open days or exhibition days, um, whether it's lifts closing, like lifts are broken or something like that, you know, you can put a sign up, it still looks professional, but it means that you can react to it quickly. Again, it's not just a laminated, a laminated sign. Um, so with this system, you still do sort of your smaller signage, so because it's got the inbuilt cutter, um, you can do all, all your pipe marking, again, sort of a service instruction, operator procedure there. Um, 
great thing with this is obviously you can go out on site, take a physical picture of a part of the site or a, part, a, a bit of machinery or a pipe like this. You can go back, put it on the software, write any further instructions, and then you can go make sure it's up um, and it's you know it's there. You know, effectively, signage is a preventative measure, so it means you can you know if you spot something, you can react to it quickly, print it off. You're not waiting for you're not having to raise an order each time. You've got the cost of that. You're you know you're able to react to it and uh, yeah get your signage up quickly. Um, and again, sort of detail you can go down to, and obviously you can do sets of labels, nested sets. Um, again, we've got an asset label um, down the bottom there. So so yeah, just shows you some of the examples. So the the larger system. Um, so it prints 200 mil wide, so the price of the system is 2950. Uh, the actual materials that you get with it, if you look at the materials for every 100 mil square, they're actually cheaper ongoing. So um, what I'll do is, whilst James goes through an example, he's going to show you the process colour. So um, this basically uses four ribbons to build up the picture. So he's going to show you a label. What I'll do is I'll swap the printer over. Um, just so you've got it, and then I can go through some other examples after after James has done that. Right. Hello, guys. So, right, let's just get the um, screen switched over. Okay. So, um, as John was saying, we're going to do a process color, a process color label. Um, so, if I just close this one down. So, just like before. If we go to File and then New, this time we're going to be using the CPM 200. And the first thing you're going to want to do, um, because we're actually inserting a graphic, um, it's, it's, it's similar to the clip art, um, but it's, it's similar but a little bit different, I guess. Um, so, first things first, I've actually got a graphic saved on my computer. Um, so I'll go through how we actually put that in in a second, but um, let's first decide on the size. So we'll stick it 200 width, um, and let's go with let's go with about 100, 120 again, or let's say 100. Margins are set correctly at five. The horizontal and vertical radius, which is just the visual aspects, we're going to just set to zero. And let's just increase the rows to, let's do three. And add a nice little Y gap in the middle. Again, um, with a 200, it's, you can still add the one mil gap. It's entirely up to you. But with some of the bigger labels, uh, you may just want to increase that slightly. So I'm just going to use a two mil gap. Um, so if I click OK. And just like before, we just hold down the control key and use the scroll wheel to zoom out. You can see you've got one white label and your two grey labels. Um, so now, if we just actually go onto the toolbar here, because we're inserting a graphic, it's still a picture that we're looking at, but uh, from the, from the drop-down arrow, instead of going to clip art, we're going to go to fixed picture. So if I click on fixed picture, go to the label, Again, this is just where you, you can browse to the actual physical location on your computer. Uh, for me, I'm already, I'm already there. I just save on there. So we select that. So the, one of the first things you'll notice that's quite apparent is up here, you've got a lot of grey, almost grey, blank squares that would otherwise be the colour palette. And this automatically changes because the software can detect that to print this graphic, you will need to use process colour. There, there wouldn't be a way of actually printing it with solid colour, um, or if you did, it wouldn't look anything like this. So you can see here that at the top, we've got solid and CMYK, and it's automatically defaulted to the CMYK. Um, so I'm just going to resize this accordingly. Like so. Again, what you would probably do in this case is make the label a little bit bigger so you can, um, so the height a little bit, um, a little bit greater so you can actually fit more on the label. But just for this purpose, I'm, go I'm going to keep it like that just to show you. Um, and then if we go with a cut shape, so picture, clip art gallery, click onto the label, CPM, then cut shapes. 
again I'm just going to choose the, the 90 by 91 which is that one there and just so I can get this nicely aligned I'm going to just hold down the control key and zoom in a little bit edge. So you go, that's, that's just slightly inside the label just so it does we don't get any white gaps or anything like that. And um, yeah that's basically it because for this one all the text and the, everything in there is what we want. So you just got to prepare your CMYK ribbons which I will um, as I send it to print I'll just change it back over so you can see um, you can see it printing but Again, just like before, file and print. Again, with labels, um, we want to actually select pages because we've adjusted the rows and columns. Check we're printing to the right printer, which we are, and print. So I'm just going to use the state to over again. So you can see here that um, previously the yellow would have been there, but it's automatically detected that yellow was inside the printer, so it started to. Um, but these three colours here are the ones that are kind of waiting to be printed. So um, once it's actually printed the, the, the yellow, I'll leave this up a second just so you can see that it will actually prompt you for the next colour in just a second. That so with, with the CMYK, it was, it was printed in a, in a particular order. So with the block colour ribbons, um, so you can, you can choose which, which order you want, you want to print it. But with the, with the CMYK, um, so it was, it was printed in a particular order. So as you can see there, um, it's a place with the magenta, which one's just done. Um, and it's just like that throughout throughout the process of the, the four colours. So I'll, um, I'll just change the camera back so you can see it physically printing. So you see the, I mean the printer, exactly the same, <laughs> it's a smaller system. The only difference is it's, it's just a little bit wider. The great, I mean, the great thing with these printers is considering what they do, they are desktop printers, so you can sit them in an office environment, you can sit them on your desk, you don't need a print room for them, you know, you can have them right next to your desk and you can print, you know, professional signs, industrial grade signs at your desk, so you don't need to keep moving around this part of the site. So you just put the next one in. And again, these, these cartridges have RFID tags uh, in them, so if someone does interrupt you halfway through a print or you go off and do something else, if you come back, put the wrong one in, then the software will prompt you and say, you put the wrong one in, can you put the, the correct one in? So, so again, what it does, it does metre and a half stretches, so it will do so each, each pass, and you can fit as many labels on a metre and a half, half stretch, and then just the cut at the end. some examples that we made up, obviously topical at the minute, the coronavirus, so these are, these are examples that potentially hospitals, universities, um, lots of government organisations might potentially use because they have to react to, to certain things. So what we do as well is if we have any new graphics that we, that we make up, we'll put them on the website, we'll make them available to our customers so obviously you can download them, you can get them quickly. And the great thing with this, with this system, because it prints um, full colour, is if you have any PDFs that you want to use internally, that kind of thing, you can just drop it into the software. But this just gives you, gives you an idea of some of, the, some of the different sort of graphics and signs that you can create. Um, yeah, and the good thing with us is you get support with, with the printers as well. So if you need any help with any templates, um, and anything at all, you can just give us a call. Either we can help you make the templates or if we have any existing templates made up, we can just send them across to you. Um, so you have that support in the office. So, I mean, staff-wise at Lighthouse, we're sort of around, coming up to sort of 70 staff. Um, and the majority of the staff are generally support sales. 
Um, so, um, you know, we've got quite a big sort of support network in the office. So when you call through to us, we can help you. The phone's always answered within sort of three rings. Um, we can help you with any sort of tech support question. And the amount of training that the staff go through just to make sure that they can help you with either the software, whether it's an order or any kind of question, you can sort of call through to us. But again, like I say, you've got some, you've just got some more examples of the, you know, potential things that might come up with, with certain, you know, projects. Um, and obviously as well, price-wise, you can see, well, you can't quite see some of the prices on there, so it's £1.78 um, for, to produce that board. So to buy something like that in, people are probably spending five, ten pounds plus. So, you know, it depends on who you are, where you get it from. You might get a different price every time. And the great thing with having your own system is it's the same price every time. You know how much it's going to be, um, so you can work out work out the cost. And you can get it quickly. Um, we do have price lists for all the material, so they're all on our all on our website, all clear, transparent, with all of our materials. Um, that are on the price list, unless it's specified, there's there's no minimum order quantity, um, and obviously you can you can get them quickly if you order before four o'clock. But the good thing is that the prices are clear, transparent. We don't do things like bulk buying, uh, price breaks or anything like that. The price is you know it's clear. It means you can order it quickly. Um, so we've got brochures of the the actual printers on the website as well. Um, again, the price you've got on there. Um, so if, if it is something of interest, the best thing to do is, say, is just give us a call and then we can go through the uh, different offers that we, that we do on, on a monthly basis. So, so that sort of covers the, the three main printers that we do. Um, so hopefully you've seen how they work, the different types of application. So if you do have any other questions at all, then give us a call. Um, if you do want an on-site demonstration, then we can, we can arrange that. Um, but yeah, if you give us, give us a call um, on the office numbers, it's 01509 264 500. Or if you go onto the website, if you want to make an inquiry that way, uh, then obviously we can, we can assist. All right. I'll just, I'll just come on and say a quick hello. Go you, on. Yeah, James, nice see you James the hidden man. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I've, I've been behind the scenes, but yeah, I've been assisting John. But yeah, yeah, we're here to help really at the end of the day. So anything you need, just get in contact with us. And yeah, we'll hope to hear from you soon. Yeah. Thanks for joining okay. us. Thanks.